If you own forested land and have maple trees on it, especially in groups, you might want to try tapping for maple syrup. If you think you are interested in making maple syrup, the first thing that you need to learn is what a maple tree is because you can make maple syrup from any kind of maple tree. And in the Department of Forestry at UK, we have a little uh, ID book on how to, how to recognize your trees. And an important thing about maple trees is they're one of our few kinds of tree species that have what is called opposite branching, which means that the two leaves or two branches come out exactly across the stem from each other. So even without leaves on the tree, you can look up and see a branching pattern where they're all just opposite one another wherever a new twig or branch comes out. The second thing is to find out that you have maple trees that are healthy and big enough to produce some sap for uh, making syrup. You need to use some kind of thing that will measure the diameter of a tree. This happens to be a forester's diameter tape, which will just read it for you. But you can do the math. If you use just a regular tape measure, you can do the math and uh, divide by pi and figure out what the diameter of the tree is. So this tree, it, which is the one that we're going to try tapping, um, we want to see how big it is. You measure just about at chest height and put your measuring thing around the tree and in this case this tree is nearly 14 inches. Trees need to be a minimum of 10 inches to tap with a single tap and as the trees get bigger this is probably big enough but certainly 14 inches and above you can put two taps in but you never want to put more than two taps in a single tree. Uh, you'll get all the sap that it has to give with one or two taps, depending on the size of the tree. If you're interested in tapping a lot of trees, select an area where there are several maple trees close to one another, or you will spend a lot of time and energy hiking between trees and carrying heavy buckets of sap. You might want to tap the trees on their southern facing side, as the sun will warm that side more quickly to start the sap flow. The spile is the small fixture that goes into the tree and provides a conduit for the sap to flow out into the tubing, bags, or buckets. Some are made of metal, some of hard plastic. I'm John Wilhoyt. This is my farm in Woodford County, and we this is our first time to uh, try tapping maple trees. Uh, this hillside, we've tapped about 40 trees. To tap the trees, we uh, use a battery-powered drill with a 5 16 inch drill bit. Um, you want to tap, the, uh, you want to drill your hole uh, at about, they say about a 10 degrees below horizontal. So if this is horizontal, we're going to come down about 10 degrees. And we want to drill in the tree maybe an uh, inch and a half. And I could see some sap as we did it. So these, this goes in here. And uh, you can see it's already dripping, so that's kind of exciting. Um, we also bought these uh, food grade five gallon buckets and lids. And uh, So these are ready to go. We also we drilled holes in the tops of the lids, and um, the uh, and then for tapping, we've got this tubing, and the tubing uh, fits into the hole like this, and then um, connects to the uh, spile, and then force it up there. On the fitting. Or make a network of tubing throughout the sugar bush area to a larger centrally located collection tank. You can also use these food grade bags for sap collection. 
Sap for making syrup rises in the late winter when we have cold nights followed by warmer days. Ideally, overnight temperatures are at freezing or below, and daytime temperatures get up into the 40s or above. This encourages the sap to flow. Sap is beginning to move upward in the tree to provide sugars to help the new buds burst out. Once the sap is flowing, it must be collected on a regular basis, at least once every 24 hours. If the daytime temperatures are warmer than, say, 50 degrees, sap probably should be collected more often and put under refrigeration as soon as possible. A 55-gallon food-grade container is a good size for collecting the sap from the buckets. A small tractor or four-wheeler might be a good piece of equipment to help with this. Tapping the trees and collecting the sap are time-consuming, but the hard part is boiling the sap down into syrup. For the maple trees with the highest sugar content in their sap, it still requires about 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. Making syrup requires stainless steel pans with baffles, similar to what might be used for making sorghum molasses. And this is why maple syrup production is a very high energy, very intensive thing because while the sap is running, it's kind of a 24-7 uh, kind of business to do. But there's quite a reward at the other end. But do remember that if you're going to do this, you have to monitor your sap really closely. And you don't wait until the buckets fill up, you just collect it every day. Maple syrup, once correctly boiled down, bottled and sealed, is a shelf-stable product. It is also a high-value product and may be well worth the intensive labor it requires to produce. If you are interested in learning more about maple syrup production, you might want to purchase the North American Maple Syrup Producers Manual by visiting this website or call 614-292-1607.